I've got Harry Prasad and Maya here with me. You guys have a whole team with you. And this is truly one of the most interesting stories I think that's come out of here. First of all, where did you guys come from? We're from India, Kerala. Um, our where in India is that? It's in the southern tip. Okay, so that was a long way to travel here. <laughs> how, did, how did, you've got a big team. How, how big is your team? How many folks do you have on it? And then how many did you bring? It's 17 member team and we are nine over here right now with our guide, Dr. Ganesh Odupa. Nice. Yeah. And uh, so how did you guys actually get here and how did you get your machine here? Uh, we took it with us, uh, packed it up and brought it in, in bags. Parts. <laughs> in parts and parts. So it's like we bought the whole machine in five big bags. So it was carrying... You literally checked it on a plane. You yeah. took it apart yeah. and you checked it on an airplane. Exactly. We did. That's how we did it. Nice. That's pretty impressive because this is a big machine. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to ask you guys about was what kind of challenges you've faced during this competition. And I think you have, you've had more modifications to your robot during the, the event than anybody else. So tell me a little bit about how that happened. Okay, so uh, in fact, we started with a model where we had eight legs. So these eight legs uh, gives us a very good traction to go over different surfaces. At the same time, these legs were used, powered by linear actuators, so that if we find a rock in between, which is almost three size as, three times as the wheel size, we can traverse over it. So that's... Wait, so the leg would, would the leg actually raise up? Yeah. Wow, so, okay. Uh, like, uh, according to the surface where we are on, uh, rowing on, we can raise the leg or bring it down into a dip and we can move it. So that's how we started. And at the same time, if you are crossing an inclination, uh, we could uh, adjust the equators in such a way that the whole body of the rover will stay horizontal and the rush will be up and down. So it will not topple. So that's, that's very impressive. Yeah. But yeah. it doesn't have eight legs anymore. What happened there? So there's a lot, we had a lot of challenges. Uh, weight was definitely an issue for us. Uh, with eight legs, it was much, much more. Um, and, and based on the different tasks and everything, we decided to be very modular. And, you know. so, so let me get this right. You guys were like, you know what? We got a few extra legs. Let's just chop them off. Exactly. Did you literally take a saw and chop off the legs here? No, no. no. We just undid them. And, okay. Yeah. They were just bolted in because you packed them in a bag anyway. Yeah. And so the good thing is if anything happens to one of our legs, we've got spare parts. That's true. <laughs> That's true. You've got extras. So now you're down to four legs. And you're, what, what I find amazing is with all that extra uh, uh, chassis size you had, you must have had electronics and things mounted everywhere, right? So what did you do when you had to start removing pieces? Were, did you have to move the electronics around? So in, in fact, uh, even when we had the legs, we had all the electronic parts mounted in the central part okay. of it. So if we are removing one leg, we just have to remove that module from it. So, so did you guys ever think, like when you were back home designing this thing, in case we lose a leg or something, you know, we'll be able to we'll be able to keep going. Did that cross your mind? Yeah, it, it did. I mean, it, that, that was certainly not what we were aiming for, but it was just a backup, just in case. Yeah, I tell you what, from what I've witnessed out here, backups backups are everything because <laughs> everybody's having problems. Well, you guys, good luck with the rest of the competition, and thanks for uh, hanging out. Thank you. Thank you.